God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we had gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. And with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace this holy tide of Christmas, all other doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, star. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Hold throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, 
shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Oh, go tell it on the mountain over the hills and was born that he that he allowed us to be in on the birth of Jesus because Jesus came as a baby babies are so approachable so easy to adore so easy to connect with I I don't know of anybody I, I know it's true of me even though I might not run to a, if I see a baby my heart just immediately goes right oh so cute, so pretty, so beautiful, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I could be my, you know, acceptable six feet away and still feel that way. <laughs> and so um, just so smart of God uh, to do that, to, to allow us into <coughs> that part of who he is. He wants to be adored, yes. And, uh, and so he gave us, he started us out with the babies. He made it easy for us. Uh, so that um, when the times got tougher, that we would remember that. Adore, worship Christ the Lord. Let all that is within us Triumphant, oh, come ye, oh, come. 
you all the glory this morning, Lord. We praise you, we adore you, and you deserve all the glory. Lord, you came into the world as a little adorable baby, and you encourage us to come to you. You said, come just as we are, and if we just obey and come as we are, we are assured that your presence will rub off on us. The key for us, Lord, to move in your glory is to partake of your holy word every day, Lord. And as we study your word, it brings life to us. And it brings light to our path, Lord. Because you came, we trust that you only want the best for us. Help us to walk where you lead us, Lord. You alone, God, are worthy, worthy of the glory. We offer you our praise this morning, the sacrifice of praise, and we give you our adoration. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Glad to see all of you here this morning. Uh, I see a number of sweaters and jackets. <laughs> it's getting cold. <laughs> and I th want to thank the worship team for our songs. They were so nice to see. sing those songs of Christmas, right? Beautiful. And the beat of that first song, man, that got me going, I tell you. Well, <clears throat> this morning, um, we have a new speaker, my wife, Jan. <clears throat> Now, those of you who've been years here, you know, you know her as Jan or Mrs. Tirui or Mrs. T. Since we left Kapaa Missionary Church and have been in other churches and, and as interim pastor, uh, her new name now is Auntie Jan. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to take over for a little while. I uh, gave her a couple minutes. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think I need it, but maybe there are some of you, like my husband, who cannot hear very well. <laughs> so I think I better put this, use this. All right. You're in for a treat. You didn't expect me to be a speaker today because it was not announced. So I have my Bible, I have my notes, and just relax. Okay, all right. Thank you, worship team. I really enjoyed all that Christmas song. Thank you. <coughs> we do have some visitors this morning because I met them. They're from Texas. Any other visitors 
I'm sorry. I'm uh, making my speech longer because I want to meet all the visitors because yeah. they're special. There are a couple from Alaska? Wait, this oh, is, we have visitors from here. I just met okay. them and talked to them. From Stand Texas? Up, please. Aloha. So we know who you are <laughs> and we can greet you after church too. You have to talk loud because I cannot. You Ed, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Any others? Any others? They're Please from Oregon, stand. Oregon here. Oregon, stand <laughs> up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've aged a little bit since 1982. From Alaska, the 49th <coughs> state. All right. Oh, so wonderful to see you visitors. Take the time to come to church. And uh, we're so fortunate here at Kapal Missionary because we're the first church that you see when you drive into town. <laughs> so thank you for stopping. <coughs> we always love to see visitors. And the rest of you, because you're old timers to us. We're very old, old timers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, uh, uh, my husband was so gracious to allow me to have two minutes. He, I told him, don't count the minutes until I start my program. So he cannot count what I'm saying before, okay? Because he'll give me the sign. And if I don't listen to him, you know what can happen on the way home. We won't be able to stop at a restaurant to eat. We have to go home and have to cook, okay? So don't tie me yet. I'm not in my program yet, okay? Okay, I'll begin now. All right. May the, oh wait, I have my glasses. As you get older, you cannot even see a little note. May the Lord of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And you remember what joy? means Jesus, what's the uh, O? Others and you, you. <laughs> Say it with me, Jesus, others, and you. And that's what my husband preached last week, remember? And from his preaching, I thought, oh, God placed a little, wait now, don't count my minutes yet. I'm not in my program yet. <laughs> The Lord placed a thought in my mind that this week, past week, just, just completing, um, oh, completed, I was going to bake a cookie for each one of you, Jesus, others, and you, meaning we appreciate you very much, especially when you come to hear him because you knew he'll be here for two weeks and then we're on to somewhere else, okay? So... And he preached this from Romans 15, 13. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you remember this message, Domi. Yeah, I remember teaching Domi at Kapai Elementary in the sixth grade. And he used to throw balls at me, <laughs> paper balls. And I'm supposed to catch them. And if I caught many, then he would give me a reward. I didn't catch any. <laughs> you remember that, Domi? He does. Mr. Sousa's class, yes. So Romans 15, 13, now you can start. May the God of hope fill you, fill you with all joy and peace. All right? And we do have lots of joy. I do anyway. And so I want you to bake. And I have, while I'm talking, my pastors, please stand up and pass the cookie out. And you have only one. Because I don't want you to get, you, you know, this is Christmas. Thank you, Kale. And thank you, PJ. Okay. Yeah, I have the two passes. Take only one now. There's only one cookie. And I may not have enough for everybody. And if you didn't get one, I'll bring one to you next week. 
are we going to be here next week? Oh, he said, yeah. Okay, so let me know. All right? You love these cookies. They're my favorite. Hurry up, guys. I'm watching you. Move fast. That's it. Okay, good. You're walking faster now. Remember, if you don't have one, come see me because I'll bring one to you next week. Pastor is they will be back at this church next Sunday. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Time. You want me to do the hula or something? Time. Two minutes. Two minutes is up. I have to come down now. Oh, I'm not done yet. I have to obey because he won't let me do this again if I don't obey. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, hon. We're hoping there'd be enough for everyone. We're not sure if uh, there's enough, but hopefully you all got one. Okay. Well, I enjoy this season of the year when we hear Christmas carols played and sung almost everywhere we go. And I really enjoyed the songs today. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much. It was so great. <clears throat> There's a pastor named Brian. I don't know who his, oh, his last name is Bill, Brian Bill, who tells the story <clears throat> of kids who don't know all the words to the carols of Christmas, but they don't hesitate to sing those songs. However, when they sing the songs, they have their own lyrics, their own style to it, you know, because they may not have understood all the complete words of the song. So here are some of them. We three kings of porridge and tar, <laughs> as one. He's making a list, chicken and rice. Olive, the other reindeer. <laughs> oh, what fun it is to ride with one horse soap and hay <laughs> and sleep in heavenly peas. Not peace, but peas. Chipmunks roasting in a forest fire. <laughs> okay. Those are some interpretations of kids to Christmas carols. Your turn. Let's see how well you do with this Christmas carol quiz, all right? Give attention to the melodious celestial beings. What's the title of that song? Hark the Herald Angels, yeah, okay. Um, embellish the entryways. Deck the halls, all right. Nocturnal noiselessness, silent night, jubilation to the entire terrestrial orb, joy to the world, yeah. And then, alas, diminutive settlement in Israel. Oh, little, man, you're sharp for this corner. <laughs> All right. And so this morning, I want to focus on that little town of Bethlehem. Luke chapter 2 is where we have the account of the birth of Jesus. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, yeah, it's on the screen, great. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, where he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Now, is this italicized here? Pledged to be here. The next page, do you have that one? While they're there, now, if you have manuscripts, you'll see that it is italicized. And the reason I have it italicized is I want to come back to that phrase again. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. It's a very familiar story, one that you hear or read every time during this season of the year. Let's pray before we go on. <clears throat> Father, we are grateful for the gift of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world in such a humble way, who lived a life of humility and gave himself totally for each one of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the plan of salvation. Thank you that you love us so much in spite of the fact that we are rebellious and sinful people, but you still love us. You cared about us. You gave us your son. He gave his life. And so this morning as we're here to celebrate Jesus, I pray that as we look at this passage of scripture, speaking a little bit about the time of when he was born, that your Holy Spirit would minister to each of us. We've heard this story many, many times, but Father, the challenge is always new and fresh to us as far as living for you. And so I pray that that would be accomplished today in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me just give a, a few snapshots <clears throat> of this account of Luke. Joseph and Mary are expecting a baby, right? They're living in Nazareth. Nazareth is way up in the northern part of Israel, and uh, Judah on the southern part where Bethlehem is located. So it's about 80 miles between Nazareth and, La uh, and Bethlehem. And so they're expecting a baby. They're living in Nazareth. The Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus, issues a decree for a census to be taken. Now, we're not told why that census was required or asked of him. Uh, it could be he just wanted to know what the count was for his whole empire. I don't know. Uh, that's why we take censuses, right? Just to find out how many people are here and who gets what money and so forth. Well, he, in, he, he just happened to call for a census. And for me, it's not just happened that it happened that way because the reason for the census brought Joseph and Mary from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. And we have prophecies saying that that's where Jesus is going to be born, in Bethlehem Ephrathah, remember? So everyone <clears throat> is supposed to come now to the hometown that they were raised in to register to comply with this degree by Caesar. Joseph is originally from Bethlehem, as I said, so that's where he has to register. And Bethlehem is where David, the shepherd who became king of Israel, also came from. So you see the lineage. Jesus is called the son of David. And so you see the lineage from David down to Joseph, all the way tying down to the little town called Bethlehem, where Jesus is to be born. And then we read in Luke's account, while they were there. It doesn't say when they got there, when they arrived. It says while they were there. So it gives us a feeling or sense that Joseph and Mary had been there a little while. Two days, three days, we're not sure. It's not that they just arrived in Bethlehem and then knocking on doors, trying to find a place to stay. They had been there for a little while. It appears to be that way. And then it says that 
there was no room for them in the inn because Joseph is trying to find a place for Mary to give birth. There was no room for them in the inn. And Joseph, uh, I don't see him pounding on doors, but making requests for a place to stay. And then they go to this inn, it says. And usually we think of inns as uh, like a motel or hotel, you know, a place where you sign in and register and pay and all of that. Uh, but it was interesting when I was going through this that I found out that the word in, in the Greek, in Luke chapter 2, is the word kataluma. And the word kataluma means guest room. Not so much a motel or hotel kind of thing, but it's a guest room. There's another Greek word that's used for inn or like a motel, a commercial place of business where people would stay. And that's located in Luke chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. This is the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan is traveling along the way. He finds this Jewish man who had been beaten up, robbed, and he, he picks him up and helps him. So he, it says here in Luke 10, Jesus is giving this parable. He, the Samaritan, went to him, the injured Jew, and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn. And the word there is not kataluma, but pandokion. Different word entirely. And took care of him. The next day, he, went out, uh, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. So you know this was a place of business, a commercial place. He gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for my, any extra expense you may have. In Luke's account, chapter 2, we read there was no room for them in the inn. But nothing is said about the innkeeper. So it kind of made sense to me. I was working on this message last, last year for uh, Colon Missionary Church. And I did some research on Bethlehem. I just wanted to find a little bit more. And so th this is something I found out. And it was fascinating to me. So th they go to this place, this house evidently, where the people don't have any room. Now, let me go backtrack a little bit. Bethlehem was crowded with people. People were all coming in from all parts of the Roman Empire to their hometown, Bethlehem. Now, some of you may know this already. Do you, anybody? If you already know this, it's, uh, excuse me for going into this detail, but it was just fascinating to me. Anyway, people are coming from the Roman Empire all the way, those who... Uh, consider Bethlehem their hometown. They're all coming to hometown. Can you see little Kauai, if we had something like this taking place, all our relatives, those who were born here in Kauai, would be coming all about the same time because they had to register for the census. It would be a madhouse. It would be really a, 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 a hard, hard time. Anyway, uh, the inns of that day did not have a good reputation. And uh, were probably full, if they had any, uh, that were already booked as people came to Bethlehem to register. And then I mentioned also, while they were there, so it kind of reveals to us that Joseph and Mary had been there a few days, and uh, they had probably gone to relatives' homes to ask for a place to stay. And because people were crowding in already, there was no room at the, the house that they went in, you know. And so we find them stuck. Now, if that were so, if they were going through the relatives' homes and had a difficult time finding a, a guest room where they could stay, then wh where whoever may have opened the door to them would have said, well, we have a place right here at the stable. Here's what a typical Judean house looked like when I checked uh, Google. So Google is pretty good stuff, you know. Uh, but a typical Judean house of that day. 
consisted of an area near the door, often with a dirt floor, where the animals were kept at night. If you take a look, the entryway, you'll see there, and uh, it's a dirt floor off to the right. Let's see. Can you make out that? Is a sheep? Yeah, off to the right would be the sheep on the lower floor. And then there would be stairs that go upstairs. The second floor is where the family room would be and a guest room, a kataluma. Sometimes there would be a guest room on the lower floor as well. But whatever house that Mary and Joseph went to, they had no room in the guest room because probably was occupied by some other relative. And so the only space they had would be by the stable where the, where the animals were kept. And the animals were kept in the house like that because uh, to prevent them from getting stolen or to be an object of prey of some kind. And so, so the stable, quote stable, would be as part of the house. And so this would be where Joseph would settle with Mary and Mary would be, get birth, and Jesus would be laid in a little manger. Did you get that picture? A little bit different, yeah? A little different from our Christmas story that we see traditionally. So, anyway, let me go back to something else here. The crowd of people in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem at that time is estimated to have had a population of three to a thousand people. So when we read in Micah's prophecy about Bethlehem, Ephrathah, old, being a little town, that's exactly what it was. About a uh, maximum would be a thousand people. And here they are in Bethlehem, suddenly packed with people from everywhere unprepared for all of these extra guests. And so you can imagine the demands for food and for water and, of course, for lodging was there. And, and, and so the people, the townspeople were just stretched to the max as all of these relatives were coming in looking for a place to stay. Can you just imagine how busy they were, how completely overrun they were with huge added responsibilities. And you know what it's like when you expect guests in your home. You know, you clean the house, get everything ready, make it as nice as you can and, and all of that. And so these people were just flooded with people coming into their homes and asking for a place to stay. And so I can imagine as they were doing all of this, it just plain exhausted, just worn out. Because people were coming in day in and day out, register, take off, register, take off, and more people coming in. Exhaustion. I want to talk a little bit about a personal experience of ours. A number of years ago, and this is quite a number of years ago, Jan and I had returned from a trip to the mainland. I think at that time I was a district superintendent also, and so we would go twice a year to Fort Wayne, Indiana to, uh, for general board meetings. And in October, we'd usually have a, a, a hundred club banquet that we put on, raising funds for our churches here in Hawaii. And uh, I can't remember if that was that time of year we were there, but we were gone for about a week, 10 days, came back from the mainland. And you know, when you go on an extended trip away from home, that when you get home, all you want to do is what? Rest. There you go. You got to take a vacation from a vacation, right? That kind of idea. You want to get home and just rest because we were tired. And our, our tiredness, our weariness was not merely a physical weariness at that time. We were going through some things in our lives that was causing emotional tiredness as well. And I was, had, I was having some personal struggles and experiencing a weighty heaviness of my heart. And so upon our Returned from the mainland, all I wanted to do was rest, just rest. Well, the night after our return, my mom called, 
And she said that my uncle, her brother, was very ill, and so she wanted to go see him. And so I made arrangements with her, because mom doesn't drive. I said, well, tomorrow then, mom, let's go ahead and uh, go see uh, your brother. She wanted to prepare food for him, and his daughter and son-in-law were living with him too, so she wanted to have a meal for them. And so Jan and I picked her up, went all the way to LLA, <clears throat> and uh, went to his home, and had a nice visit. I shared the gospel with my uncle, but sad to say, he didn't respond. I want to come back to that story in just a little bit, because the next morning, we got home that night, and the next morning, Jan and I had to catch an early flight to go to Oahu, where I was to be in meetings again, district executive committee meeting, and also a district task force meeting. And so we were there for two days of meetings. But on the second day when we came home, it was night, about 6.30 in the evening, we got home, and uh, I came to church here to check the mailbox, and while I was doing that, I think it was PJ, I can't remember exactly who it was, said that s somebody was trying to reach me, a classmate of mine was trying to reach me. And so I got home, it was about 6.30, and I called my classmate, and no answer. I tried a couple times, no success. Then about 7.30, I get a phone call from a family who were going through some extreme hard times and needed to have some assistance. So Jan and I got ourselves ready to go. Meanwhile, the phone rang again, and I thought it was extended family calling, but it was my classmate calling. <laughs> and then she's explaining about how her husband had just passed away, a high school buddy of mine. And so I'm on the phone talking with her, trying to console her, and uh, I'm looking at my time because we have to be at the other emergency. And so I uh, made arrangements with her to meet with her the next morning. So we went over to the extent, uh, the emergency family meeting and, and uh, ministered there. And then the next morning met with our classmate uh, for her husband's planning of his funeral service. And I tell you, in that brief span of about 13 days or so, I was exhausted emotionally, physically, just exhausted. I, at this point, I want to be honest with you. And I hope you receive what I have to say with an understanding heart, because this happened a long, long time ago. But even then, at that, in those moments, when I was feeling so tired, so weary, so exhausted, my thoughts were like this. Lord, what about my needs? What about my hurts? What about the struggles I'm going through who is there to comfort me? I was struggling with that. I could kind of relate now to the people, the townspeople of Bethlehem. They were exhausted too. They were overrun with demands being placed on them, with the crowds of people who were needing food and lodging. And perhaps they too were weary and exhausted. And so Joseph and Mary were just two people among many who needed a place to stay or needed some help. And so I wonder, if I had been a resident of Bethlehem in that day, would I have opened up my house to Joseph and Mary? I'd be exhausted, tired. I don't think I can handle anything more. Please go find someplace else, you know? And so whoever took Joseph and Mary in were in for a blessing that they didn't know was going to happen. The Christ child was going to be born in that house. Well, 
I want to get back to my mom's brother, my uncle. Although I was experiencing this personal hurt, struggle, I'm so glad that Jan and I took my mom to visit my uncle because that night, as I shared Jesus with him, and he did not accept the Lord, he didn't respond to the gospel, some days later, I was with his son-in-law who had been there in the house, and he said, you know that prayer that you gave to my uh, father-in-law? I prayed it. I received Jesus as my Savior. Whoa, hallelujah. And then, that family with a special need, I'm so glad that Jan and I went to visit with them because we're able to join our hearts with them before God. And my classmate that we met the next morning, we were able to meet with her, console her, pray with her, assist her in the planning of her husband's celebration of life service. We're meeting needs of people. We're able to be there for them in their loss, in their sorrow, in their hardship, in a time of difficulty. And the words of Jesus in Matthew 25, 36 really took meaning for me at that time. Where Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. So I came to realize that ever since that first nativity in Bethlehem, where Joseph and Mary had needs, they had to have a place to stay so that Mary would have a place to give birth to her baby, the needs of Jesus continue. And so today, we find that needs of people, it's like Jesus saying, that's me there, you know. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And so as I look at Bethlehem, I look at it this way. Maybe Jesus is saying to us here, today is your Bethlehem. Today I entered your Bethlehem, your kapa'a, in that distraught mother. Today I walked into your Bethlehem, your kapa'a, in the flesh of that suffering little baby. Today, I walked into your Bethlehem, Kapa'a, in that dad, wondering how he's going to pay his bills. Today, I walked into Kapa'a, your Bethlehem, facing that person who needed a word of encouragement or somebody who needed a support in prayer, support in some tangible way. Whom do you see that you can serve? What need does someone have that you are aware of the Lord may be calling you to meet? God opened my eyes back then, weary as I was, but as I was able to see the ministry doors that God had opened up to help people who were in need, I was doing it as unto Jesus. And when I I came to that realization, my weariness, my tiredness, my exhaustion left. There's only joy. Wonderful joy. God, you have given me the strength to be able to accomplish things that you would do Thank you for that. So, who do you see whom you can serve? And what need does someone have that you are aware of that the Lord may be calling you to meet? uh, Paul Tigman wrote a book called A Reason for Joy. In that book, he had this prayer. If you have, would that be on the screen? I'm not sure. If you have your transcript, uh, 
take a look at that, okay? Would that, would that be on the, on the uh, screen? No? Not there, okay. If you have your scram, uh, transcripts from the bulletin, pull that out. It's a beautiful prayer, and I think it uh, ties in with today's message. The world turns in darkness, Lord, longing for light. Make me, make me your star in the night, a bright sign that you've heard their cry and invaded their place of need. Make my soul a stable, though it may be poor, so that the least of your children may seek you and find you in me, even as I find you in them. Lord Jesus, come, walk in our streets and make our home the site of your continuing nativity so that we too might bring good tidings of great joy. Would you stand, please? And I'd like for you to read this and make this a personal prayer of yours, where it speaks about me, many of you emphasize that. Ask God to do this for you, all right? In unison, let's spread. The world turns in darkness, Lord, longing for light. Make me your star in the night, a bright sign that you've heard their cry and invaded their place of need. Make my soul a stable, though it may be poor, so that the least of your children may seek you and find you in me, even as I find you in them. Lord Jesus, come walk in our streets and make our home the site of your continuing nativity so that we too might bring good tidings of great joy in all God's people said, Amen. 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 And Jan for the message. You know what Pastor Ed shared is so true that sometimes that sometimes in, in our busyness, you know, getting ready for Christmas, we forget about the Holy Spirit talking to us and sharing his, his desire for us to touch, reach out and reach out to people. And we just need to take the time to just settle down and just seek the Lord and just be able to listen and do what he calls us to do. This is a, a time of communion uh, right now. We have uh, two tables up front, and we will, uh, you will be able to come forward, pick up the elements, and return to your seat. Uh, we will be taking communion together as a family. Now, communion is a special time if to renew our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Jesus commanded his people to do it often in remembrance of him because we forget. Here at Kappa Missionary Church, we do communion on the first Sunday of each month. Uh, when we partake of the bread and the juice, we are proclaiming that we believe that Jesus' ultimate sacrifice was giving up his body in a brutal crucifixion on the <coughs> cross. He took on the punishment that we deserve for our sins. He was the unblemished lamb of God that was sacrificed to pay the full price for the forgiveness of our sins. It was his choice. He had a choice. He knew of the, the punishment, the painful punishment that was prepared for him. He even asked the father if it was possible to take this cup away so he didn't have to suffer for it. It was his choice. He thought about you, he thought about me, and he chose to obey the will of the Father. Jesus gave up his body to be sacrificed on the cross for the forgiveness of sin and to restore fellowship with the Father. The blood in the new covenant is in Christ Jesus. 
When we are taking communion, we are proclaiming <coughs> the Lord's death until he comes again. We should examine ourselves for any unconfessed sin and repent, which means to turn from our sinful nature. The communions are pretty much in like a kit. It has a two parts to it. It has the juice and the wafer together. So when you pick it up, just go to your seat and meditate on what the Lord has done for you. What his sacrifice has done for you for the forgiveness of our sins. Visitors, uh, you are <coughs> welcome to partic participate in our communion this morning. So as the worship team plays, you can just come forward to receive the elements, go back to your seat and meditate on what God has done for you in your life, what you are thankful for. Bring your peace into our vines. Bid our hungry souls be filled. Word of breaking, heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to. the communion cup for those of you are not familiar with it has two parts it has a thin film on the top that separates the wafer from the juice so let us separate it right now and take take hold of the wafer piece to read from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 30. Now Paul writes to the church in Corinth, for I received from the Lord which I have delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night that he, which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said 
Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread. The last part of the cup is the, has the full uh, tab to separate you from the juice. <coughs> so in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, <coughs> you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Thank you, Lord, for this, for your sacrifice on the cross, that we do have a personal relationship with you. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. At this time, we'd like to take the, the morning offering. And we have our, our Hula ministry to be able to uh, perform for you this morning. And I like the song they chose, Come As You Are. Let me pray for the morning offering. Heavenly Father, we as I read John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And Lord, that's a beautiful gift that you have given us. And Lord, as we give back in our offerings and tithes, we pray that you would just multiply it a hundredfold, Lord. That it will reach, the word will reach out to the, not only here in Kapaha, but in the community, on the island, in Hawaii and around the world. Lord, we just want to be able to reach out that you made us the light in the world to go out and just share the gospel message. We give thanks this morning for the morning offering. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I have offering both up front and also in the back, and you may be able to do it at your convenience. So 
Thank you, Hula Ministries. They're always a pleasure just to watch them offering their dance in praises to the Lord. I want to say thank you to Pastor Ed for the message this morning. Just, it's a good reminder that we need to not always be busy about what we are about to do. We thank you, Jan, for your message this morning. And your thank cookies. You. And thank you. Cookies. <laughs> you need to come back next week because I didn't get one. <laughs> but thank you, it was a, just a wonderful message this morning. And just be able to just <coughs> continue to, we ask the Holy Spirit to just continue to fill our hearts and to be, be the light, be the light in our in a dark world. Let us pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful morning that, that your presence here was awesome. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you work in our hearts during the message, that you spoke clearly to our hearts. And Lord, we just need to receive it and be obedient to your word, that you call us to not to focus on ourselves, but to focus on others that are in need. But then they call on us, Lord, let us be ready to respond and be that light in that person or that community. Lord, we need to be the light. We just ask you to give us the strength to, to carry on, to go, go through our life, Lord, that everything that we do will bring glory to you, Lord. That you, and Lord Jesus, we look forward to your, your, your second coming. And we give thanks in Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Let's go out and love <coughs> God and live aloha. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we had gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood, each 
other now embrace this holy tide of Christmas all other doth deface so oh, tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy oh star of wonder star of night star Keep it.